Almost every Muslim you'll ever meet believes that the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted. They believe that the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted because they know two things. One, that the Quran affirms the inspiration of the Torah and the Gospel, and two, that the Quran contradicts the Torah and the Gospel. If the Quran affirms the inspiration of the Torah and the Gospel, and the Quran contradicts the Torah and the Gospel, there are only two possible conclusions. Either the author of the Quran had no clue what he was talking about, so he affirmed scriptures that contradict his teachings, or the Torah and the Gospel, though originally inspired by Allah, were corrupted at some later time. Muslims obviously don't want to believe that the author of the Quran had no clue what he was talking about, so they conclude that the Torah and the Gospel were corrupted. The problem for our Muslim friends is that the Quran affirms not only the initial inspiration of the Torah and the Gospel, but also their preservation and their continuing authority. The Quran nowhere suggests that the Torah and the Gospel are no longer available. Since the Quran explicitly denies the corruption of the Torah and the Gospel, the only option left is that the author of the Quran had no clue what he was talking about, so he affirmed scriptures that contradict his teachings. It would be strange to think that God had no clue what he was talking about. Hence, the Quran is not the Word of God. That's why Muslims go into panic mode whenever we point out that the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures. That's why Muslims will gladly twist and distort Allah's words in the Quran. They have to twist and distort Allah's words in the Quran, otherwise their religion self-destructs. Last week I challenged Muslims to show me a single unequivocal statement from Allah in the Quran claiming that the gospel has been corrupted. The most common verse Muslims sent me, the number one verse Muslims sent me to prove that the Quran affirms unequivocally that the gospel has been corrupted was Surah 2 verse 79 of the Quran. If you listen to Muslim presentations on how the Quran affirms the corruption of our scriptures, this is the go-to verse of Muslim apologists. If you go to Muslim websites to learn where the Quran affirms the corruption of our scriptures, Surah 2 verse 79 is the go-to verse. Muslim apologists place so much weight on Surah 2 verse 79 that we might reasonably suspect that if Surah 2 verse 79 doesn't say that the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted, it's game over for Islam. Let's read the verse. Woe then to those who write the book with their hands and then say, this is from Allah, so that they may take for it a small price. Therefore woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they earn. So the Quran condemns those who make money by writing a book with their hands and claiming this is from Allah when it isn't from Allah. Our Muslim friends insist that this is referring to the Torah and the Gospel, and that this verse categorically affirms the corruption of our scriptures. Does it, though? Let me draw attention to a few problems with the Muslim interpretation of this verse, and we'll see if they can defend their view. Here goes. A. This verse doesn't even mention the Torah or the Gospel. The surrounding context doesn't mention Christians at all. This entire passage is about Muhammad's interactions with Jews when he moved to Medina. So best case scenario for Muslims, this could be about the corruption of the Torah. But under no circumstances is this about Christians and the Gospel. B. The Quran is apparently referring to Jews in Surah 2 verse 79. But we can't ignore the fact that it's only referring to certain Jews. Just a few verses earlier, in Surah 2, verse 75, Allah says, Do you then hope that they would believe in you, and a party from among them indeed used to hear the word of Allah, then altered it after they had understood it, and they know this? This passage isn't condemning all Jews. It's condemning a specific group of Jews, not Jews in general. C. The Quran elsewhere claims that there are other Jews who faithfully recite the Torah and would never change it. 
For instance, Allah declares in Surah 3, verse 199, And there are, certainly, among the people of the book, those who believe in Allah and in that which has been revealed to you, and in that which has been revealed to them, humbling themselves before Allah. They do not sell the verses of Allah for a little price, for them is a reward with their Lord. If some Jews write something and claim that it's from Allah in order to mislead people for money, but there are other Jews who know the Torah and would never sell it for anything, there are, obviously, according to the Quran, Jews who are faithfully preserving the Torah. D, according to Muslim commentators, Surah 2, verse 79, either refers to certain Jews in Arabia who tried to conceal prophecies about Muhammad in the Torah by writing a false description of him and claiming that it's from the Torah in order to keep people from believing in Muhammad, or it refers to certain Jews who wrote down some of their misguided interpretations and claimed that what they wrote was from God like the Torah. What would this have to do with the Torah itself being corrupted? Nothing, as far as I can tell. If someone writes a false description of Muhammad and claims that it's from the Torah, this doesn't change the Torah. And if someone writes down his false interpretation of the Torah and claims that it's also the Word of God, this doesn't change the Torah. E, since Muslims will reject my last point and insist that someone writing something and claiming that it's from the Torah would somehow corrupt the Torah, watch how fast I can make them contradict themselves. This is from the Quran. I just wrote this. According to the Quran, this is a false description of Muhammad. But I'm claiming that it's from the Quran even though it's not. Have I corrupted the Quran? Have I corrupted any Quran? No, Muslims? So now you're telling me that if I write something and claim that it's from some book, but it doesn't actually come from the book, I haven't necessarily corrupted the book? Good to know, hypocrites. F. Suppose certain Jews were able to insert their false description of Muhammad into an actual copy of the Torah, so that an actual copy of the Torah was corrupted. Would this mean that the Torah in general had been corrupted? I don't see how, even if the Jewish community in Arabia were to add a false description of Muhammad to the Torah, this wouldn't corrupt the Torah, because the Torah was being read in Jewish communities in Europe, in the Middle East, and in Northern Africa. Would their copies of the Torah magically change because some Jews in Medina added some words to the Torah? If you say yes, please provide your evidence. G, since Muslims will reject my last point and insist that adding some words to a book corrupts not only that copy of the book, but also all copies of the book everywhere in the world, watch how fast I can make them contradict themselves. Looky what we've got here. I added some words to the Quran. I added the words, Muhammad, is the most obvious false prophet in history. So, I've added words to the Quran. This means that all copies of the Quran throughout the world have now been corrupted. Right, Muslims? No? So, now you're telling me that adding some text to a book wouldn't magically change all copies of the book around the world? Once again, Good to know, hypocrites. H, even if the Jews of Medina writing a false description of Muhammad could somehow magically convince every Jewish community on the planet to change their copies of the Torah, although the Quran says that there are Jews who would never do this, Christians also had the Torah as part of the Old Testament. How would Jews altering the Torah affect Christian copies of the Torah? Let me guess global conspiracy against Muhammad, right? I, even if the Jews of Medina could somehow magically convince not only every Jewish community on the planet, but also every Christian community on the planet to change their copies of the Torah, 
we still have copies of the Torah from before the time of Muhammad. The Dead Sea Scrolls, for instance, obviously weren't influenced by Muhammad's Jewish enemies in Arabia. Unless, of course, the next Muslim theory is that the Jews of Medina were time travelers. Jews. J, just a few verses after Surah 2, verse 79 of the Quran, which, according to Muslims, is categorical proof that the Torah has been corrupted, we have Surah 2, verse 85, where Allah condemns Jews who reject parts of the Torah and refuse to follow all of it. Allah asks, Do you then believe in a part of the book and disbelieve in the other? Allah condemns them for believing only part of the Torah. But that's exactly what Muslim apologists say that Jews are supposed to do. Jews are supposed to believe in the parts that agree with Islam, but reject the parts that don't agree with Islam. Needless to say, if Surah 2 verse 79 means that the Torah has been corrupted, it's very strange for Allah to demand obedience to all of the Torah just a few verses later. K, still later, in the same passage, in Surah 2, verse 91, the Quran says that it's verifying the scriptures that the Jews have in their possession. And when it is said to them, believe in what Allah has sent down, they say, we believe in what was sent down to us. And they disbelieve in that which came after it, while it is the truth confirming what is with them. The Quran confirms what the Jews already have. What an odd thing to say just 12 verses after Allah supposedly tells them that their scripture has been corrupted and can't be trusted. L, Surah 2 not only confirms the scriptures of the Jews after verse 79, but also confirms the scriptures of the Jews before verse 79. Allah declares in Surah 2 verses 40 to 41, O children of Israel, Remember my blessing which I bestowed upon you, and fulfill my covenant, and I shall fulfill your covenant, and be in awe of me, and believe in that which I have sent down, confirming that which you have with you, and be not the first to disbelieve in it, and sell not my signs for a paltry price, and reverence me. Allah says that the Quran confirms the revelation that the Jews already had, confirming that which you have with you and he commands the Jews not to disbelieve in the revelations they already had. So our Muslim friends tell us that Surah 2, verse 79 of the Quran is an unequivocal statement of Allah, declaring that the Torah has been corrupted. And yet Allah proclaims in the very same chapter, both before verse 79 and after verse 79, that he's affirming the scriptures that the Jews have. This means that 279 is sandwiched between verses that affirm the inspiration and preservation and authority of the Torah. Either Allah changes his mind a lot, or Muslims are radically misinterpreting verse 79 of Surah 2. M. The Quran says that Allah revealed the Torah as a guidance for mankind. Surah 3, verses 3 to 4. He, Allah, has revealed to you the book with truth verifying that which is before it. And he revealed the Torah and the gospel aforetime, a guidance for mankind. And he revealed the criterion, supposedly the Quran. So if Allah gave the Torah as a guidance for mankind, and corruptors simply corrupted it so that it didn't guide mankind, Allah was thwarted by corruptors. Poor Allah, overpowered yet again. And the Arabic phrase translated as before it, here in Surah 3, verses 3 to 4, is Baina Yadehi, which literally means between his hands, or between its hands. When used as an idiom, Baina Yadehi means in his presence, or in its presence. So the Quran isn't verifying books that came before it, but were subsequently corrupted. The Quran is verifying books that were still available as it was being revealed. And since the Quran specifically refers to the Torah and the Gospel here, the Torah and the Gospel still existed and were verified as the word of Allah during the time of Muhammad. It's as if Allah is saying, how can I make it any clearer to you that I'm talking about texts that are still around, not about texts that were lost or corrupted centuries ago? 
Oh, Allah says that 7th century Jews and Christians were still reading the Torah and the Gospel during the time of Muhammad. In Surah 7, verse 157, we read, Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written down with them in the Torah and the Gospel, it is they who will prosper. How could Jews and Christians find Muhammad written down with them in the Torah and the Gospel if they didn't have the Torah and the Gospel? Is the Quran only saying that there are parts about Muhammad that are reliable even though other parts have been corrupted? How would we know that the parts about Muhammad weren't among the corrupted parts? What's the point of appealing to a book to validate your prophet if you're simultaneously claiming that the book you're appealing to has been corrupted? P. Contrary to charges of corruption, the Quran asserts that no one can change Allah's words. Surah 6, verses 114 to 115. Shall I then seek a judge other than Allah? And he it is who has revealed to you the book made plain. And those to whom we have given the book know that it is revealed by your Lord with truth. Therefore, you should not be of the disputers. And the word of your Lord has been accomplished truly and justly. There is none who can change his words. And he is the hearing, the knowing. There is none who can change his words. Surah 18, verse 27. And recite what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is none who can alter his words, and you shall not find any refuge besides him. There is none who can alter his words. Who can corrupt Allah's words? According to Muslims, anyone can. According to Allah, no one can. At this point, our Muslim friends usually say, well, these verses are only claiming that no one can change the Quran. But these verses don't say that no one can change the Quran. They say that no one can change Allah's words. And as we've seen, the Torah and the Gospel are, according to the Quran, Allah's words. Q. Just as Allah admits that Jews and Christians still have the Torah and the Gospel, Muhammad admits that Jews and Christians still have the Torah and the Gospel. In Jamiat Termidi, 2653, Muhammad's companion Abu Ad Darda reports, We were with the Prophet when he raised his sight to the sky. Then he said, This is the time when knowledge is to be taken from the people, until what remains of it shall not amount to anything. So Ziyad bin Labid al-Ansari said, How will it be taken from us while we recite the Quran? By Allah, we recite it, and our women and children recite it. He said, May you be bereaved of your mother, O Ziyad. I used to consider you among the fuqaha, Islamic jurists, of the people of al-Madina. The Torah and the Gospel are with the Jews and the Christians, but what do they avail of them? Ziyad wants to know how it's possible for knowledge to depart from the Muslim community when they have the Quran. Muhammad points to the Jews and Christians and says, they still have the Torah and the Gospel, don't they? Muhammad's response makes no sense if he thought the Torah and the Gospel had been corrupted because he's only bringing them up to show that just because you have reliable scriptures and you teach them and quote them, this doesn't mean you're on the right track. R. Muhammad went so far as to affirm the inspiration and preservation and authority of a copy of the Torah that the Jews brought to him when they wanted him to settle a dispute. We read in Sunan Abu Daud 4449, They set out a cushion for the Messenger of Allah, and he sat on it. Then he said, Bring me the Torah. It was brought. And he took the cushion from beneath him and placed the Torah on it and said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. So the Jews had a copy of the Torah. Muhammad spoke to it and said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. Muhammad affirmed a physical copy of the Torah in the hands of the Jewish community of his own time. Why is this relevant? Well, this was years after Allah revealed Surah 2, verse 79. So why was Muhammad affirming a copy of the Torah if Allah had already revealed that the Torah had been corrupted? One of life's great mysteries. 
S. In Surah 5, verse 43 of the Quran, also years after Allah revealed Surah 2, Allah agrees with Muhammad that the Torah is the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. Look at Allah's response when Jews come to Muhammad to settle a dispute. Allah says, Why do they come to you for judgment, O Muhammad, when they have the Torah before them, wherein is the judgment of Allah? Yet they turn back after that, and these are not the believers. According to the Quran, do Jews need the Quran? No, because they have the Torah. According to Muslims today, do Jews need the Quran? Yes, because the Torah has been corrupted. Do you see the unbridgeable gulf between what Allah says and what Muslims say? T, in the very next verse, after Allah says that the Jews don't need Muhammad because they have the Torah, Allah says that Jews who refuse to judge by the Torah are unbelievers. Surah 5, verse 44, again, revealed years after Surah 2, verse 79. Truly we sent down the Torah, wherein is a guidance and a light, by which the prophets who submitted unto Allah judged those who are Jews, as did the sages and the rabbis, in accordance with such of Allah's book as they were bidden to preserve, and to which they were witnesses. So fear not mankind, but fear me, and sell not my signs for a paltry price. Whosoever judges not by that which Allah has sent down, it is they who are disbelievers. Why would Jews be disbelievers for refusing to judge by the Torah if the Torah had been corrupted? You... Just two verses later, we read about Jesus confirming the Torah that existed during his time. Surah 5, verse 46. And in their footsteps we sent Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the Torah that had come before him, and we gave him the gospel, wherein is a guidance and a light, confirming the Torah that had come before him as a guidance and an exhortation to the reverent. Care to guess the Arabic phrase that's translated as before him? Yep, it's Baina Yadehi, which means between his hands. Jesus confirmed the Torah between his hands. Why is this significant? Well, we have copies of the Torah from before the time of Jesus and from after the time of Jesus. It's the same Torah that Muslim apologists say is corrupt. So according to Muslim apologists, Jesus and his revelations from Allah confirmed a corrupt Torah he had between his hands. And Muslims claim that they respect Jesus. V, if the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted, Jews and Christians have nowhere else to turn. Because in Surah 5, verse 68, Allah tells Muhammad to say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the Torah, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. We have no ground to stand upon unless we stand fast by what? Corrupt scriptures? Doesn't make any sense. W. Interestingly, the Torah and the gospel were authoritative even for Muhammad. When Muhammad was having doubts about his revelations and... He certainly had doubts. He was commanded to go to the people of the book for confirmation. Allah tells Muhammad in Surah 10, verse 94, But if you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to you, ask those who read the book before you. Certainly the truth has come to you from your Lord, therefore you should not be of the disputers. Why would Allah tell Muhammad to verify his revelations by checking with people who have corrupt revelations. The only way Muhammad's revelations would line up with corrupt revelations is if Muhammad's revelations were also corrupt. And I've never met a Muslim who wants me to believe that Muhammad's revelations were corrupt. X, despite centuries of trying to reinterpret the Quran, certain modern Muslim scholars are beginning to acknowledge that they've got a problem here. Dr. Abdullah Saeed, professor of Arab and Islamic studies at the University of Melbourne, writes, Since the authorized scriptures of Jews and Christians remain very much today as they existed at the time of the Prophet, it is difficult to argue that the Quranic references to Torah and Injil, Torah and Gospel, 
were only to the pure Torah and Injil as existed at the time of Moses and Jesus respectively. If the texts have remained more or less as they were in the 7th century CE, the reverence the Quran has shown them at the time should be retained even today. Many interpreters of the Quran, from Tabari to Razi to Ibn Taymiyyah and even Qut, appear to be inclined to share this view. The wholesale dismissive attitude held by many Muslims in the modern period towards the scriptures of Judaism and Christianity do not seem to have the support of either the Quran or the major figures of Tafsir. Why, given everything we've seen, the only way we could possibly grant that Surah 2 verse 79 of the Quran is claiming that the Torah has been corrupted is if we first grant that Allah is the absolute worst communicator in the history of forever. If Allah was claiming in Surah 2 verse 79 of the Quran that the Torah was corrupt, and he denies that it's corrupt right before the verse and right after it, and he condemns Jews who only believe in parts of the Torah, and he consistently affirms the inspiration and preservation and authority of the Torah, so much so that he could plainly state that Jews didn't need Muhammad because they already had the Torah. If that's Allah's way of saying the Torah is corrupt, then Allah is the undisputed champion of poor communication, even though he brags throughout the Quran that his revelations are perfectly clear. Z, since Muhammad himself believed in the Torah that the Jews had in their possession, saying, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you, and since Muhammad clearly said that the Jews and the Christians still had the Torah and the gospel, Allah must have been so horribly unclear in his communication that he ended up accidentally misleading his own prophet. Now, Muslims, if Allah was so hopelessly unclear that even Muhammad didn't understand what Allah was saying? I'm sure you can forgive us for interpreting Allah's words in the same way your prophet interpreted them. You believe that you're right, and that we're wrong, and that your prophet was wrong, even though, according to Islam, Muhammad is supposedly the greatest interpreter of the Quran. But that's your problem, and Allah's problem, not ours. So, we've done the Islamic alphabet aerobics. We've gone through 26 reasons Surah 2 verse 79 of the Quran can't possibly be saying that the Torah has been corrupted, much less that the gospel has been corrupted. Can Muslims agree with us? Can Muslims go where the evidence points here? No, if they go where the evidence points, they'll have to conclude that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah and the Gospel. They'll also have to conclude that since the Quran contradicts the Torah and the Gospel, the Quran simply can't be the Word of God. But if they conclude that, they're no longer Muslims. They're apostates. So what do Muslims have to do? The same thing they always do. They have to reject the mountain of evidence that's right in front of them and stubbornly cling to ridiculously false claims in order to preserve their wavering confidence in history's most obvious false prophet. In the comment section, I want the Muslims who refuse to go where the evidence points to prove me right. Go ahead and tell us that in spite of the 26 reasons I just presented, Surah 2 verse 79 is still somehow unequivocally and indisputably proclaiming that the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted. Go ahead and say it. If you still believe it, I want you to say it so that other people will see what Islam does to your ability to think clearly. I want you to show people what Islam does to the human mind so that everyone will know to avoid your prophet and your book like the plague. As for the rest of you, keep in mind, Surah 2 verse 79 of the Quran is the best they've got. The other verses they use to try to show that the Quran affirms the corruption of the Torah and the Gospel are much weaker. This is by far the best they've got. I had no problem pointing out 26 problems with their claim, and I can think of several more. I just ran out of letters. Learn some of the problems with the Muslim claims about Surah 2, verse 79, and you can wreak havoc on Islam using an argument we call 
The Islamic Dilemma. More tomorrow.